Welcome to my home. Some of you who are watching this video might have been here before for different reasons. If you haven't been here yet, or if you're returning again now, you are very welcome. I live here on my own. This is where I've been for the past four and a half years since I moved to Lincolnshire, and I'm delighted to say that I'm happy here. I feel safe here, as safe as it's possible to be in our volatile world. My partner is in London where he works. He is caring for the people of his parish from his home, and I wish we were together at the moment, but we can't be. It so happens that I'm not alone because I do have my mum staying with me. We took the difficult decision that she would possibly be safer either with me or my brother rather than in her own home with neighbours who are having to self-isolate for very good reasons. She wouldn't want me to describe her as vulnerable, but she is older and she is one of the very many people in our society that those of us who can must seek to care for by our actions and choices as we live with the impact of COVID-19. Anyway, welcome to my home. And it was in my home that I listened last night to the Prime Minister and simply thought, gosh. And it was in my home that I began to realise something of the magnitude of what's happening to us all right across the world at the moment. Things have changed. And in order to keep people as safe as possible, our behaviour, our expectations, these all must change. One of the changes that happened before last weekend was that public worship was suspended. While understanding the reasons for the suspension, many people were shocked and felt deprived, especially of the sacrament. That which should sustain us is no longer in our hands or mouths. Where is the body of Christ, the bread of life, now? Is it just for clergy or for those who might be able to celebrate, as it were, behind closed doors? I feel the loss of my regular communion. I didn't receive the sacrament on Sunday. With millions of others, I made my communion spiritually. I am very grateful to those parish clergy and others who have presided at the Lord's table on my, on our behalf. But not being a parish priest, being an assistant to the bishop, who has the cure of souls, I felt that I had to refrain from presiding myself. This runs deeply against my spiritual discipline, but along with so many others, I think I'm being called into a new place by the impact of the virus. And then today, further dislocation and deprivation. Our church buildings, our holy places, our shrines and sanctuaries are closed to everyone, even for funerals. I can hardly express the pain that this causes me for those who would have felt the consolation of entering their church for prayer. But if in entering their church to pray they picked up a trace of the virus from a door handle and were themselves infected, how would I feel then if, by my insistence, that church had remained open and I'd exposed them to risk? We live in very difficult times. All of us are compelled to be at home, out of respect for each other, and as we struggle with this disease. So, welcome to my home. Last night, Mum and I watched a video of the simple Sunday service that had been recorded by her incumbent from her vicarage front room. We were led in prayer. I think we drew some comfort. And that was before the Prime Minister made his announcement. We're going to get used to being at home to pray. We're going to get used to making contact with each other from our homes to our homes. We're going to have to be mindful of all who have no safe home or who are frightened and alone in their homes and reach out to them as our neighbours. I'm mindful of some words of scripture. I'm probably misapplying them, but these are the words that come into my heart now. In my Father's house are many rooms. I believe the Lord is with us in our different rooms at this difficult time, and I'm trying to place my trust in him. May you know God's love, and thank you for your companionship in Christ.